I'm Reverend Solomon Adibara, the president of Fountain of Grace Ministries, aka Fountain of Grace Chapel. I can say that the Adeboye is a unique man of God, heaven bid and heaven sent. He's been a man of, you can describe from various angles. Just like um, when you see an elephant, if you are by the talks, you think that's all there is. If you are by the tail, if you are by the stomach. So there are a billion and one ways of describing our daddy, wonderful daddy. First, we'll say he's a true man of God who had been genuinely saved, who had had an encounter with Jesus, a man of holiness and righteousness. I will call him an intelligent man, very intelligent. A man that is very wise. A father indeed. A man that has a large heart. A man that is very humble. A man that is prayerful. A man that has in-depth knowledge in the word of God. A man that loves God passionately. And the church of God. Uh, I can keep on giving various descriptions of him because that's truly who he is. I'd like to say that he's also somebody who can come to the level of anybody. His humility is unparalleled. His dedication is unalloyed. He's somebody that is also passionate about souls. He's addicted to soul winning. Uh, we can also say that that the Adeboye is a practical believer, a man that does what he preaches. I would say his administrative capability is extraordinary because you wonder how a man will be able to administer and direct the affairs of a ministry like RCCG and everything has been intact. We we'll also say that, that the Adeboye is highly anointed. It's a man that God's hand is upon with extraordinary signs and wonders follow his ministry. We will also say that this is a man that whose faith is also outstanding uh, from the beginning up till this moment. We've had a lot of testimonies that prove the fact <clears throat> that this man has extraordinary faith. Looking back to a few decades ago when he started building the uh, the presidential villa in the in the camp when it was not fashionable to be a Christian and he had the faith that presidents will be coming to the camp today it's become history so such a man so that's why anytime he says anything once he says it just look out for the fulfillment very shortly because it will come to pass and we will give glory to God for an outstanding star that God has given to us we are we rejoice that in our lifetime we are able to see a man like this. Uh, well we have the apostles, they are ground breakers we have the prophets they have hindsight they receive from God they, 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 they have ability to know more they are current with what God is saying we have the pastors who I will call uh, they are nurturers we have the evangelists who go all out. The, you see, when you meet an evangelist, there is no discussion that will not end up in salvation message. You have the teachers. Uh, the teachers actually are the ones that get believers grounded. Each one for the purpose of uh, making sure that the body of Christ is established. You see, when the prophets speak, it doesn't sound reasonable. It doesn't look familiar. You, you wonder. It raises questions. And we have seen this uh, manifested in his life a billion and one times concerning issues. They speak of things to come because they are ever current. They hear from God. And you see, when the prophet speaks many times, uh, you, you find it difficult to agree. For example, when um, Eli, Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, you see, that in itself was questionable. How will this be? But by the following day, under 24 hours, it had come to pass. 
uh, we can reel back a lot of things that that they have said, either nationally, in the body of Christ, etc., that has come to pass. So he, he, he fits very well and plays the role of a prophet by the outstanding uh, prophetic word he had given in time past that had come to pass. So I, I believe is just part of his humility side to say, no, I'm not a prophet. Indeed he is. But the Bible tells us that uh, whosoever says, don't say the Lord, and it doesn't come to pass. And that's one sign that he's not a prophet. Two, whenever a prophet speaks and he contradicts the word of God, he's not a prophet. Three, whenever a man speaks and you should examine his life, so you will know that uh, his prophecies might be coming from somewhere else. Because uh, if a man calls himself a man of God, he's hearing from God. Uh, two can't work together and they'll be agreed. So the quality of his life must point to the fact that this one is of God. So whenever these various assistants are not actually fulfilled in the life of any man, then it's just, he's on his own. And we can see in the life of our, of our daddy, in all these decades of working with God, decades of leading this, the largest uh, uh, body of Christ in, in the world, We've not had a single scandal. Oh, he said this. He was found here. He spoke contrary. No, it never happened. So we can say he is a truly called prophet by excellence. There is a difference between the spirit of suspicion and the spirit of discernment. Uh, some people also have here say, and then they bring it up as if it's discernment. Uh, every gift that only God gives can never, never be given without Christ. Because Christ is the one that, the gateway to anything that God has to offer. Remember he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. The second time we will repeat it at the transfiguration. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. The truth of it is that what God is saying in essence is, everything I have to offer is through this man. The Bible says, Christ in you the hope of glory. There is no connect, I mean, with that connection to God, with that connection with Christ, it's impossible to get what God has to offer. Because even these gifts are given to those who are members of the body. So whosoever des desires any of the gifts must first be connected to the giver. Must first be saved. If not, they will come under a strange spirit. And they will mistake it to mean uh, a gift from God. That's why you see uh, people do so many things. Some people will go into a white fast, long fast. They are trying. You see, because when you are even under a fast, you are open to all, I mean, all the spirits that are available in the world. There's the spirit that comes from God. There's one that comes from the adversary. Even those in the other world, they have a way of using fast to gain many things. So, instead of going fasting, go and connect to Jesus, be saved, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's a complete package. Every other thing comes with him. After salvation, the Holy Spirit comes into you. And then you now get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then the Spirit of God indwells you and makes it possible for you to operate in any of these gifts. So connection to Jesus is priority number one. Don't go through any other route. Even though it might be an exercise in futility. Um, to also winners, uh, we were discussing recently uh, at a forum where I mean ministers and some people say, well, we are no longer going out because this whole thing, a lot of problems about the body, a lot of people speaking against the body, and they no longer want to go out. Well, the truth of it is, it is an order, it's a command from God that we should go out. Don't worry about every other thing because. When you get to the market, if you listen to the noise of the market, you will not focus on who you are marketing with. The God who called us, Jesus before leaving, said, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses. It's a command that we must obey. I want to encourage you, no matter what you, you face, no matter what is happening, keep preaching. Some are discouraged because they say, well, I've never, you don't even know who eventually, that you speak, it doesn't get saved. It doesn't mean the word of God has not entered. And you may, it can be a little while after, just a contact with somebody, a 
on just a single statement, such is sin. There is something you have deposited. It's a duty to go. Don't be discouraged. Don't be perturbed. Don't let the circumstances and situations, don't let the negative name that some people are giving themselves, not us, be a reason why you will not preach. I encourage you. Uh, he that goeth for bearing precious seed, weeping, shall doubtless come back with rejoicing, bringing sheep with him. There is great reward in winning souls. Be dogged about it, be consistent, and God will show up in your life. When we talk about the unity in the body, we cannot say emphatically that we are very, very united. And one major way I look at it is this. Every believer believe, I mean, has the Holy Spirit. So resident in him. So we are, a, a lot of believers mistake that to me where I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let nobody talk to me. Uh, do my, I do my own. If, especially when they go wrong and you want to correct them, it becomes a different thing. Um, then the perfect love that you bind us together is not really glaring these days. Everybody is minding his own thing. How he will prosper, how his church will grow, more than how the body will grow. We should be ready to do everything. He says, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. He said that they may be one, even as I and the Father are one. A genuine Holy Spirit believer must endeavor to keep the unity of the faith. That's what the Bible says. So, we need to work toward that. Do everything within you to make sure that the body is united. For example, don't look at just your church as if the only church on earth. Everyone that is born again is a member of the universal church. The church that Christ is coming from. In heaven, it's not going to come by oh, RCCG, Fountain of Grace. Uh, Baptist, etc. Whose soul's name is not found written in the book of life. It's not going to be written as per chapel by chapel or ministry by ministry. It's an individualistic thing. And God's desire is that we be one. We want to rejoice and we are so glad uh, that day has come a long way. At 80 we give glory to God. God has given him a good name. He has become an enigma in our generation, in the world, all over. My honest prayer is that God will keep him strong. God will keep him going. God will keep encouraging him, strengthening him. More anointing, more grace, more favor, more insight. There's something about God. God has no, uh, I say elastic limit, a, 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 a point where one cannot go beyond. My prayer is that at 80, Daddy will still do things extraordinarily beyond what he has done in the last 80 years. My prayer for him is that his body will carry him. The tabernacle will not give way. My prayer for him is that his insight will not reduce. My prayer for him is all the characteristics that make God keep being God in his life and ministry will continually be there. And the Almighty God will be exalted in his life. My prayer for him is that Daddy and Mommy will be united as they have been all the years. And none of them will not see each other as the Lord live it. They will not become specimens in the hospital by any standard. God will keep them strong. And they will continue to live to glorify God. And under his ministry, there will be no breaking of ranks. The system will keep moving forward. And it will be joy galore. And he still has a lot of things, great desires, and that God will give him more assignments to accomplish so that he will pursue them with grace and with vigor to the glory and honor of his name. I pray that elite, I mean, every word he speak will continue to carry, will continue to be fulfilled, and God will be exalted forever in his life. I say congratulations, Daddy and Mommy. The Lord bless you, sir, and man. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Daddy. Happy
happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you, Daddy. May the good Lord bless you. We trust God to keep Daddy to celebrate 90 if the Lord tarries. And we also trust that we keep him to 100 if he so much desires. And the Almighty God will keep him in health all the days of his life. And when the time comes, he will finish well and he finish strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Happy birthday to Daddy and Mommy. The Lord bless you.